Hello again, out at 60 Diesels. For what well, today, this evening, um, I've been buying things again. So I've bought the world's largest three and a half ton Sprinter Luton, but it does have a few issues. We just had it shipped here from Kent, came off of eBay. It's cracking. It's one of the very, very last of the 904, 905s. It's like 06. Um, but it might have a bit of a problem. I will um, I shall spin this camera around and, um, and we'll give you a bit of a look at it and then I think we're gonna to have to take it apart. It hasn't done a lot of miles and I reckon we might have some egg gasket issues. I can't think it's anything else because unbelievably, it's a bit smoky in the caravan outside, but it still runs and drives and doesn't overeat. So um, so we'll, um, we'll fire it up before I rip it apart and then we'll stick it on a bit of time lapse while we rip the head off and see what we find. Right, so basically 06, 313. So four cylinder, 130 oars. Very, very last of them. Ridiculously clean. Got a few little wounds up the top there, but we'll sort that out afterwards, tidy the body up. And this is one of our old tugs, which is in for a load of love at the moment. Um, sort of give you an idea of the size of the thing. So, um, I mean, it must be factory order, super long chassis, because I don't know about any of the rest of you, but I can't see a cut and a join. And, um, and it's definitely not an extension on the back. He's all one. Wessex bodies, which is actually funny enough, just over the hill from here. Um, so big alley body. Same again, someone's been out with the paint tin, but I'm sure we can sort that. Right, got these. Well, uh, a bit of demonstration here. Look at this. Clean. It's even got the flappy things. 129,000. So we are away. As you can see, um, we're a bit. Uh, a bit fumey under the front. And it does fire up, and it does run. As you can see, got a bit of an anti breather issue. Um, I removed this just gently, you'll see what I mean. Okay, I'm not doing that too much, I'll throw it all in your face. But seeing as this is the, um, that's the main turbo pipe coming out of the intercooler. camera got cackle over everything a fair chance there we're a horrible mess but I think there's a fair chance the um yeah that we might have some um, might have some combustion gases getting into an oil way and I don't think 20 years of mechanical experience to figure that one out um but unbelievably, we had it dropped off up the road the other yard, and I did just drive it back here, which did make a really horrible mess. So, um, I'm going to pull the top off of it, and, um, and we'll see, uh, what's, uh, what's, well, what's causing that. We know what's going to be causing that, but we'll see if this thing's salvageable. I mean, it's only done 121,000 miles or something, which is nothing for one of these, um, and the fact it's still quite happily alive and still starts is a bit of a testament to a merc. But, um, but anyway, I'll put some time lapse on now and we will get tearing this apart. Right, so that is the, well, it's just a few bits. Um, in that manifold has to come off. That's the little top engine cover. A few other bits, we'll leave them there for the minute, but they'll need to come in, obviously go through a parts washer. So we are into having to pull the injectors. Obviously they got to come out to get the rocker cover off to get in here. We've got a turbo and a manifold to drop off, um, an inlet manifold, which is a bit gooey um, to knock off this fuel filter. And obviously then we have to get into the front in here to get in the timing chains. Uh, just a quick one. As you can see, this vehicle has no signs of black death at all. It is in really, really, really good nick underneath the engine cover. But as some of you will have found, you lift this off and you get, we know it's black death. And then every garage you take it to goes, oh God, no, your engine's fucked in there, it's unfixable, blah, 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 heli coils, crap, rubbish. It's dead easy to fix, especially on these early sprinters. Um, 
oh, you'll obviously see me pull the injectors out of this one in a minute. What I really ought to do is we do this all the time. And a simple range of tools that you can buy off of a certain internet auction site, if I point you in the right direction, will cure every black death problem you've ever had. Um, so if you've got Ming in stuck injectors, there's a 25 quid tool for disassembling these injectors and pulling them out. If you happen to shear the little tiny bolts off down here and pull the thread out of the head, which is aluminium, um, steel bolt, aluminium head always fails. Um, there's a really simple drilling kit. One for drilling the bolts if you snap it off, and two for drilling it and putting a steel insert in the bottom when you lose the thread so you never have the problem again. None of this, people, is rocket science, and none of it is van killing. Um, so I'll save it for another time, but basically, if someone tells you, oh God, your sprinter's got black death, that's the end of it, it's gonna cost millions, we'll have to take the head off, we'll have to do all this engineering. That's the biggest load of arse known to mankind. This is a, what's this? This is a 612? 611. 612. Um, so, four cylinder CDI, dead easy to fix. Five cylinder CDI, dead easy to fix. Six cylinder, easy to fix. Six four sixes, dead easy to fix. Six five ones, bigger bolts. It's all using relatively simple tools quite simple to get the problem sorted so what i will do is when i get five minutes i'm going to do a video on i'll go and find a dead one out in the yard that's got really bad black gouge and we'll um, we'll show you how to do one of these engines and pull your injectors and sort it without spending a million quid at a garage who won't want to do it anyway because we all seem to run in fever well they all seem to run in fear of a mercedes inject the black death i mean these things are in everything from a cheap Cherokee, some strange Korean imported stuff, Vitos, C classes, E classes, um, all the way through the range of the Sprinters. They are dead, dead, easy to fit. I mean, Christ, they even put these engines in Cessna aircraft, for Christ's sake. So they're not bad motors. Right, but we'll, uh, we'll pop you up a bit more and back to you. We're gonna pull all these injectors out, get rid of this fuel harness, fuel harness, fuel filter, um, get rid of this manifold make this turbocharger fall off and then i'll show you how to pull the fuel pumps and the front here and when we get into the timing chains and there's a big nut down there that undoes the uh, timing chain tensioner <laughs> So, that's the inlet manifold off, all four injectors out. Um, the wire inlet manifold has the main injector wire in harness, the top engine harness going through it. So you can undo the pair basically if you're gentle, they are plastic, don't go silly, um, and get it out over here enough for what we need to at the moment. I will probably strip it right out and clean it because it's minging. But for the minute, what I want to do is get in here and see what this head's like. So now I'm going to quickly pull, this is the vacuum pump in two bolts, just slightly move the dipstick, it will gingerly bend out the way, don't go crazy levering on it, because you'll just snap it off and that'll put you in a whole world of pain. Um, this is the little diesel, um, what's the best way of calling it, it's a tiny little diesel pump, basically it's like the lift pump from before the um, main high pressure pump. And then so I'm going to dump this pipe here and pull its bracketry. Um, lean him out over there, out of the way, and then back here, at the back, you probably can't see it at the moment, but it's the other heater pipe, is on, on the back down there. And then, once this lot is out of the way, um, I'll run him round onto his timing mark, put him on top dead centre is a good start. So OT on a sprinter, you'll see it on the top there, OT, top dead centre. Um, there isn't much point worrying about um, which side of 360 the cams could build, 180 the cams could be out. Um, really a current because as long as it's on top dead centre you're going to take all this off and pull it apart so um, just time it up to the bottom uh, you, we will need to get in here I'll show you in a minute and, um, and undo the timing chain tensioner which is buried down in there and then finally um, decide where we drop the exhaust manifold I could just let it off on three bolts one two three here if they come off and then I leave the turbocharger to sit where it is and pull the manifold off for the head or um or vice versa, I could actually just wazzle the manifold bolts off and then see if I can lean the manifold out enough 
so that I don't have to take all the turbocharger piping out um, and I can leave him dangling there. But we're getting on pretty well. As I say, it's nice to see the injectors popped out with any worry, mainly because this thing is so clean. And normally, I mean, um, things you do have to be careful of, obviously, because I'm pulling the cylinder head and the top off of this, I'm not worrying too much about dropping stuff into the in-map ports or into the injector holes. But if you're just doing a minor job on one of these and you've got the in-map manifold off, be very wary, because you can drop bolts down here, or nuts, or spanners, or bits of metal, or dirt. That won't do it any favours at all. It'll probably make it go boom. Um, but we're all right because this head is going to have to come off, be checked, and possibly be skimmed, stripped and skimmed. Um, it's going to have to go into a cleaning bath anyway to make sure it's lovely when it goes back on. And same with all these manifolds, they're going to have to come off because I am not putting something back on a vehicle that looks that gooey. This will have this by the time it's done. It will look minty because um, she is pretty minty. Let's make her properly minty. Right, back to more time lapsing, people. Right, so we're on um, brewage and faggage for a minute because um, we're getting on pretty well, obviously. Fagging's awful, don't smoke. Stunchy growth, brewage teeth. I mean, honestly, I, I should have been like six foot seven, but due to my smoking, I'm. F where am I? I was trying to claim five seven, but some nurse ruined that for me years ago when I went for a doctor's appointment. So five foot six. But anyway, that's a completely different. So I'm, I'm smoking and f drinking coffee. Don't drink smoke because it's obviously going to kill you. Um, we are to the point where, uh, sorry, time and train tensioner, which is down in, and we can see it. Let me go and get me other little wiggly torch. There. Actually, there she is, 22 mil. So the time and train tensioner is slackened off a little bit. It'll need to come completely out in a minute. Um, we've wiped the fuel pump off. Um, pulled, well, both fuel pumps, the lift pump and the main eye pressure pump. The, um, the vacuum pump is out, and then the front plate was bolts on with a load of little torque bolts um, around the front. That just taps out, which you've seen a minute ago. Um, this, uh, you have to leave this uh, chain um, guide behind until you've let all the pressure off, then you can hook it out of the way. And obviously remember when putting it back on to put it on there, otherwise you'll be in the same problem. Um, so on my, for my next trick, I need to take this chain tensioner out completely. I need to remove those three sort of little set of screws things there. Tap this um, timing chain sprocket off the end of this camshaft. Um, if you look, you can see it down in here. That is the fuel pump drive. Or well, the reverse of the D that we'll see, whatever you want to call it, the drive to fuel pump. So I'm going to take that big nut out there and that big bolt out there in the middle, um, which will then allow this to come forwards once that's out the front. We're going to get in here and then basically whiz through all of these little um, camshaft caps. Now they are numbered because obviously you want to keep them in order, but they all do have numbers. Um, so if you do mix them up, you can work out which ones they are. But what I just tend to do is whiz them all off, lift them off in one hit, put the whole camshaft normally in the back of the wagon on a, on a bit of cardboard so things getting oily and same with this side and then there's a big the big carrier plate that's got all the um, hydraulic tappets normally comes with it so if you can take it all as one hit put it on a bit of cardboard put it in the back and then when it comes to the reverse you can have cleaned it and chuck it all back on as one hit because you have to remove that cradle to get to the cylinder head bolts that are underneath it we haven't got around to dealing with the turbocharger yet because we've sort of forgotten about that, so that's next on my list. But I'm going to finish my cup of coffee before I turn it horrible manky colour, finish my fag, and then we are back to it. It's, um, I think it's about half past eight, nine o'clock at night. It, uh, it's been so freaking hot for about the last, um, five, four or five days that we decided it was probably sensible seeing as, well, this thing is quite big, and if we go over here, I mean, ideally, you'd like it inside, but uh, 
that's, that's... Yeah, that's not going to happen. No, my fault. We still want that thing to finish. He's just blocking up my workshop. As a Mercedes he's blocking it out behind me with some bits. So I'm abandoning me with a dead polo. Oh, I've got a Land Rover. That should be relatively easy. And then the rest. So it seems sensible just to stay out here for a couple of hours as it's cooler. Definitely cooler than that time of night. And um, get this whipped off so I can um, order the parts necessary, get it back together at lightning speed, get it cleaned up, get it sold. And also sort this pickling paint out of here that offends me. Anyway, finish me fag, finish me drink, back to it. Right, as you can probably see, we are um, coming across out, lifting out on it. Um, timing chain dropped. He's tucked down the front. Bit of a trouble with the um, one of the turbo bolts. So to be honest, it was easier to whop it off with a gas torch. Um, I've got loads of them. Um, so basically, if I undo all of the um, whip through the uh, cylinder head bolts, fish them out, and we should be um, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, and all that, and. Uh, off you come, and we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Um, excuse the failing light, but um, it's now about half past nine, quarter to ten at night. I did tell the wife I'd be home by half past nine, but she'll be all right. Um, so I'm quite keen on getting this off, so that we need to go to an engineering shop. It could go tomorrow, and I possibly could have it back for the weekend, put it back together. Right, I shall stop bumbling, and we are back on. There it goes. We had to resort to bigger bar, because these things are tight. That one I've already done. This one was murderous. Oh my lord! That's tight. That's definitely tight. God, jeez. No worries about it. I've not done the head bolts up on this properly then. Yeah. Yeah, that's tight. <coughs> They are all loose now. Yeah. Oop. La dee 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 junk. I'll keep them just in case they're not, but I'm pretty sure they're not reusable. I can't remember off the top of my head on this engine. Oh, if you're checking them on the floor. Slightly choppy and in the mid 40s, it's not good for me. And I spent a chunk of my life living in this in France. And I quite like the weather in France. I mean, it's hot, but we don't get the humidity. Whereas here, it's just melting and miserable. Right, let's see what happens. It's basically more of a slightly stubborn turbocharger bolt on one side. Oh, yeah, and I've got some coarse being a dinner. 
There's a couple of little bolts in the front here, of course. Take okay, out, that'll make a hell of a difference, won't it? It's now going to be mostly tight because I'm left the rest, let the rest of it off. I'm pretty sure they go in the junk pile as well. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I've got a bottle of them somewhere. So, what I'm do is leave Eagle out for there and then persuade it what it really wants to do. Like I say, turbocharge it. You separated from the manifold. We did have to show it who was possible the gas torch again. Um, so, the nuts off the end of there. I'm not going to be the corner of the manifold and not be worried about hundreds. Hopefully, hopefully a leverage. Timing chainage. Always oh, just the last thing, isn't it? But you should go. And here. It should be easy, wouldn't it? If you did that. It's all melted for a piston, so that's good. I don't really want to turn this over on here, but... Oh, I guess that's probably number four. Go and find somewhere. Something more fitting to go. I'll turn that a minute. I'll come out over here with a bit of cardboard. Disappointing. Oh, it's going across that back corner. Mm -hmm. Burnt line on it. Oh, yeah. I must say it's here going. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% myself. Think there's no piston damage. Oh, we'll have a quick look at the head in a minute, see if there's any telltales. But that looks a bit gacky there, doesn't it? sure about that. Um, I'm going to fill the piston balls up with some light oil diesel or something for the night, close the bonnet down and then come back in the morning and see number one is looking like most likely culprit whether we've got a ring based problem um, and it's actually breathing in the crankcase through the bottom or oh, it was breathing in through up here. It's pretty Gunky in a couple of places, but there's nothing you'd sort of. I could say it was going there. I mean, it's 
blowing so much oil and smoke out of every lot of this is kind of difficult to tell. But it's definitely cylinder one, so to be honest, if we fill it up with liquid over the evening, it's gone in the morning, we know we've got a piston issue, and we'll probably have pulled some, pull a piston. Um, she's using the change of an engine. Um, on that note, it's 10 o'clock at night for this day. I'm going to leave that alone, clear the rest of me bits up, and I will catch you tomorrow, which will be about now. So I chucked some oil in there about 15 minutes ago, thinking I'll drop the bonnet on when I'm locking up to go home. And it had disappeared. I thought, blimey. Um, anyway, a bit of cleanage. And there you go. There's our chuffy chuffy lots of smoke fault. I appear to have a piston that is as good as cracked halfway through with a big hole in the bit in there. So um that'll probably be the end of that. Um I reckon this is probably where it's done 120,000 miles. I do have an 80,000 mile engine inside, but by the time I've pulled the front off, taken the engine out, I might as well whip the sump off, put a new piston in it, or let's be honest, a new to it piston in it, um, new head gasket, and I reckon she'll live to fight another day. And I think you might want to just check that the injector's any good, because I've never seen that before. Not I've seen burn holes in the middle of them, um, but I've never seen the thing crack in two. Unless possibly it's just a miscast um, or an imperfection in the uh, in the um, aluminium piston, and it's managed to last this long. So it might be a couple of days later. Um, obviously, it isn't for you, but it is for me. So we are back on my uh, Bo Six massive Great Luton. So I have removed said dead manky piston. Um, I have used a second hand one because we got loads of. Dismantle 2.2 CDIs, around or 2.1s, 2.2 CDIs, 611s. Um, the rings were absolutely fine. Basically, I reckon it was a, um, a well, not a casting fault in the piston, but I reckon there was an impurity in there or something um, that caused the crack through it in the tiny hole. So um, we've cleaned this second handy piston all right up. It's got a couple of minor little pits in the top there from where I think the engine. Possibly sat outside for a while, um, but it's good. It's fine. The, the piston gaps, the piston ring gaps are good. All that. So we used the original rings, um, so they're back in. I've honed all these cylinders out. Um, we took the well, we were here, and the sump is obviously off at the moment to absolutely steam the death out of it. Um, I haven't painted the block. That's what it looks like underneath all the goo, um, and make sure the thing was as clean as possible. I um, I've oiled all the chains. Obviously clean this face underneath here. Now, because this vehicle obviously wasn't overheated, the problem was a cracked piston. Um, this head didn't actually need skimming. She is as flat as flat. I did make sure I went through while it was off the vehicle and extracted all the heat plugs, because they can be a little beggar for snapping off. Um, so they're all out and we will never see these or something like that them to death before they go back in. Um, I'll put the steam cleaner, put this through the parts washer and it is as clean as I want to get it and look bad at all. So um, this is genuine Mercedes head gasket. Um, it's always worth a look. I think you'll find, I mean, we get fairest discount, but genuine genuine Mercedes head gasket was like £26.40. Let's be honest, it's hardly worth buying a pay and pay and one or whatever they're called, um, non-pattern. It's always worth worth ringing your Merc D because sometimes you will be quite surprised. So I've got a genuine, um, genuine sumpy, sumpy gasket as well. So that's there because there's no point putting the old one of those back on. The sump is off and cleaned. We'll show you that in a minute. Um, and basically, I'm going to throw that back on there. Um, I'll try and make sure this timing chain, which you'll see. Yeah. So we can fish that up, so we'll put something round that so we can get that back up and then get a set up on the time, timing side of things properly. And um, hopefully, might even by the end of the day, if it doesn't get too busy, I cleaned all the manifolds out while I was here. We just steamed them right through. I've got all these little gaskets to replace, and these might as well do it while we're here, um, just to sort of more belt and braces. Um, but hopefully, not much longer. It'll go and run it up. Um, I've ordered all the oil filters, the air filters, everything. We tend to, we do these vehicles to sell, so I'm a bit sort of blanky on. Might as well service it, might as well make sure everything's clean, might as well make sure everything's bolted on properly with the correct bolts and in the right places so that when you come 
to advertise this after we've done a little bit of paint work and body work it is spot on and then you're not going to get any trouble um, right i'm going to pop this probably back on some time lapse and i'll get chucking these bits on um, and then we'll probably come back to when it comes down to talking the um the cylinder head because obviously these are stretch bolts these um cylinder head bolts but auto data do give you a tolerance on them a maximum stretch um, you can reuse them as long as they're under that matter of about 104 mil um these um these measure up at just on 100 so um we're going to run them again because they're fine they're within spec and then um, and i'll go back through and show you the um the torque sequence That's the headset on. Um, all the main little torque bolts. Obviously, you've got a range of big bolts in here. And then on one of these sprinklers tucked in the back here, you've got two little ones. So I think actually the only run at about 20 or 30 newton, newton meters. They're stage four on the headset. But don't go big dart and trying to set those 20 newton meters. These are um, so you can read it wrong, but it's dead easy. So um, torque settings on these bolts are 60 newton meters all over, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Now you will need. Um, a blinking great E20 torque socket because that's what they are and to make your life easier, easier um, you, well you can do it with an old school torque wrench um, but a digital degrees reading one is better um, for years we've had a snap on one but I broke it um, hopefully it's off being fixed at the moment so we bought this uh, I think it's a Sealy one but it was ridiculously over. The snap on one was spectacular. I mean, I'm not a great snap on fan, but I mean, this thing, I had to read the instructions four flipping times to figure out how to work it. Um, actually, once you have got the hang of it, I mean, they were quite sort of respectably priced as about 150 quid compared to 500 quid for the snap on one. Now, the nice one with the snap on one is any idiot can use it, whereas this one does nearly divide and a degree of fucking degree in um, electronics to set it so what we need to do at the moment it's currently on yeah, kilo newton. it's got about 15 bazillion settings so what i need to do is set it to 60 newton meters and then also set it to swap over to 90 degrees um, i'm going to swear at it read the instructions again because it will confuse me it always does and then we'll get on and we'll pull all these down Pull them up tight, and that's probably as far as I'm going to get to go today because I've got to go and rescue a dead 906 that won't start. And then I'm going to run out of day if I'm not careful. Right. I've got this set to 16 meters and 90 degrees. What a th As you can probably see, there's a little, well, you've got a, a digital display here, but it's also got a little light on it. So we go from amber, then we go red, which seems to be our spam face, and start beeping when we get near our torque setting. And then basically when you hit it, it'll go green and flash and vibrate the handle, which means you know that you've got there. Um, you've just got to be a bit careful of pulling too hard on the end of these things, because what happens is you dislodge this, um, undo the battery connections and then you are completely buggered. It's not too bad at, um, at newton meters because you can check it, but if you're doing degrees, um, you've sort of lost it and you might have to start all from scratch. 
Right, a bit of a helpful tip. What you'll find is when you go into the grease, I always do this, is it's worth marking out your bolts. Because obviously, if like now, I talked all these down to 60, I could go back and check it if I got distracted, which happens in this trade all the time. Um, so what I've taken to doing is marking out on a piece of paper the bolts. So basically on this head, you've got five aside. So you'd start in the middle, work your way out. So you set your torque wrench. So this is for the grease reader torque wrench. So when you've hit pulled 90 degrees, this will beep and squeak at you. Um, and then line it off. Because what happens is you're merrily doing this, concentrating, thinking that'd be fine, because I've got to do that one, then that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Um, and then someone will talk to you and you forget which ones you've done, and you can't really go back and check. You could nose it right up. So if you make a point, and it takes a piece of paper and a body row, of marking the things on your bit of paper, every time you pull one, cross it off, and then like this, there are two sets of 90 degrees in this, so literally we'll just strike them off each direction. So we'll go 190 and then work all the way around all of them, and then we'll go the opposite so that we do not forget or get lost. Because honestly, it doesn't take two seconds to not remember quite where you were. I'll stop talking now because we've just probably got to pass it overhead. Right, we've got to make this thing go over to the green. Over complicated for an idiot like myself. Oh, going to the breeze. Doing something. Yeah, right, we're in degrees. Right, so um, we're all talked up, done and dusted. So all has gone well, even with the annoying talk wrench. Basically now, uh, we've got a timing chain in it that we'll have to fish back out, but that's easy enough. And I think we're gonna toggle off around the back, go and get the cam carrier, make sure he's nice and clean. He might want cleaning before he goes in, because we get this really nicely, right? This entire engine is pretty minty. Um, we should have, We'll have a lovely clean engine oil for the first time in a long time. I've got a big barrel of that. Just bought, bless MPD. Good company, used them for years buying bits. Like parts direct. We'll give them a good shout out. Because they're a helpful bunch and price wise, you could knock them. So um, I think I've just bought a big barrel of oil. It works out about £2. 10 a litre plus the vet. Can't knock that, can you? So we need to get these nasty looking objects cleaned up back in. So once they're in, then we're on to, we'll need some new injector seals. All of this will have to be clean because we'll make sure it's lovely, lovely, lovely when it goes back together. But it is sort of five o'clock-ish now. So I think what I'm gonna do is take that and go and clean it. That'll do me for the day. But I've got to get Dom to run me to the MOT station because I've finally, managed to fix one of the C classes and it's just passed straight for his MOT. So I might even take you guys with us for that and roar up to the MOT station and go and get me free. It's a, did I say five series? I think I meant C class. Um, it's a C200 compressor that we've managed to cob back together and the air conditioning works. So prime time of year to drive it around and test it works. So, um, so well, uh, I think we'll call that a day for Mercedes fixing and try and get it back together tomorrow so it runs. <laughs> Back on the old um, one one. So first thing this morning I have, um, I've just quickly tied this up. Let me find a torch. I'll show you. Take some torch. Why do you never work when I want you to? 
Okay, as you'll see down in where's my camera? Down in here. Um, main crank timing mark. So you've got a pointer poking out there, and they will need to be on OT. Obviously, it's quite quite easy, quite obvious. So we just put it up on OT, and these were out at time, so we um drop the camshafts back in. Now there are two marks on you, or three marks actually on your camshaft. Let me get my camera to focus. Probably got oil all over the lens again. So if you can see, there's a little tiny pointer, a little tiny dent in each camshaft, left and right. And then there's a pointer mark on the cap. So third cap down, pointer, pointer. And also there's a, um, a hole through the front sprocket, front gear technically. And then um, I've just put a drill bit in. If you put a drill bit in, make sure it's, um, because you can push it through from the other, than this side easily when the thing's out. But if, you, if it's too long, you won't get out of the back here. This one is fine because I put it in from the back, so that's good. Um, timing chain uh, sprocket is back on. Um, obviously, make sure that your slack is this size. So all I do is drop the fuel pump gear in in here um, with this one out. Once the head's been, chase a chain up with a with a pick. Um, I've put the, the fuel pump drive gear he's fitted in, chain over the top of him, and then I, you can just sort of slot this um, sprocket in. And then it's got a, a, an alignment pin here, so all I do is walk it, walk it round on a link to link, so that this side is tight, um, so you're timed up. And then make sure your slack is obviously because your tensioner is or just in here. Um, and then after that, once that's done, uh, these camshaft carrier cap bolts are torqueable, um, nine newton meters, so you need a very diddy little torque wrench. Um, that's it, really. So, next on, we still haven't put a sump in this because I'm going to just flush it out again, get, <coughs> get rid of the last of the Mr. Gacky oil coming out of things so that it runs really nice and clean oil wise. Um, I will quickly pop the timing chain tensioner back in in a minute. He sits in there. Now this is all talked up. Um, and then we're basically, there's the front carrier, the front cover carrier that sits in here and picks up this, this timing chain guide. Um, there's lots in here, so we've just got to pick the remnants of this, um, this sealant. And I do, I recommend, I love this stuff. Um, Jaco HT, which is a, which is a, like a, a gray um, gasket sealant. It's really good. It's pretty much what they used to use on here when they put them together. It's not expensive and it's much better than some of the nasty black gal guck that you see hanging out of everything. So um, hopefully give me another couple of hours. We'll have the top end assembled, injectors, pots all back on, manifolds. Got to change these gaskets. And, um, and then it's a matter of putting the sump on. Um, a bolt turbocharger back on there. As you can see, I've got my bolt. I had a gas torch off last time extracted and the manifold survived. So he's fine. Um, new oils, new filters, and um, run her up, and then uh, there should be somewhere in the, well, somewhere clear then to pull the front off of it and get you painted, which is next on the list. But anyway, I'll put this back on time lapse as long as the, uh, the sun's not too bad, and um, get chucking this together. Rock covers back on, dead easy. Um, lightly talked down there about, I think they're nine newton meters again, the rock cover bolts. Um, I've swung the wiring harness back over, um, put the inlet manifold back on with some new seals in there. These ones up here are fine, and I can't find the packet of them anyway. Um, refitted a fuel rail, he's bolted back on, obviously tucked all the pipes in nicely where they're supposed to be done. Rerouted the wiring harness back where it's supposed to be. Always remember when putting back to one of these back together, there is a little tiny earth bolted on the back here. Do not forget it. Um, so what we're on to now, um, we just cleaned the pipe pressure fuel pump up, reinstalled its, um, its pipe pressure here, but it's not pipe pressure there, um, it's plastic feed lines. And um, they're these two very difficult little clips. They've got clip covers on them. 
um, and you really have to get the clip covers off and you'll just see me earlier when I was taking it apart pop them off they're very difficult to do without breaking um, to get to this bolt here which is the bottom bolt for the oh, that bottom bolt for the high pressure fuel pump he's on by three and when putting your high pressure fuel pump back in don't forget to put that in I've never actually managed it, but one bloke that worked for me did, and we couldn't figure out well we were getting no sense. We were getting no sense because the um, that's the drive for it. And without that bit bolted in, um, it no go roundy roundy with the engine, so it won't generate any fuel pressure because it's not turning. Um, so I'm going to keep bumbling on. I'm going to chuck this back on, and we'll be back in a bit. Um, and then I'm going to, I've got a bossy vacuum pump to put back in here, uh, chump pump to put back in here, and then four injectors to chuck in. So at the point now, um, all fuel pumps back on. Dump, dump, dump. So lift pump. I mean, high pressure pump, high pressure lines, rail. Um, I bought the injector pipe for just ITR. I am just dropping the injectors in. So, um, I mean, these are lovely and clean. So, new washers, new bolts. Never use the same bolts twice, people. Um, Mercedes do this really handy little tub of injector gouge uh, uh, for stopping the things getting stuck in there. It's got a part number on it. Probably has. Hang on. The, let me get it focused. There you go. So that's an anti seize compound and it does seem to work. And um, so I'm going to throw the last of the injectors in, then we'll talk them down. They're 14 Newton meters plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees. Um, all of my pits in the bottom here, the seats were lovely anyway, so there's no need to cut or clean them. Of any, well, cut them, we get a quick blowout. Um, <coughs> so after that, I've got a quick bit of turbocharger voltage, a bit more piping. Obviously the auxiliary belt, because she's still off. Some um, heater pipes, the back heater pipes are already on. And um, there's a bracket to be attached here as well. And then basically sump, oil, starty. I'm going to put you back on time lapse again. Um, we'll do a bit more. And hopefully I might have this going this evening if I'm lucky. So the point of talking the injector bolts, I was talking about me boss some of minutes again. I've just gone and checked and it's actually seven newton meters, not 14. So seven newton meters, tiny little torque wrench, when you're real diddy one, this little ten tools one. Seven newton meters and then 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Um, so I torque these now and then I want to put the turbo oil for to return on. I'll just give that a bit of a sprucey up. And I think we are getting to the point really of our some red hoses. We're pretty much together with the top end of the engine. Obviously, there's the little fuel return pipes to pull on the top. We'll leave the manifold off till we got it started. Just check all the inject seals have gone in properly. I've got to put three bolts in this turbocharger. And same again, because this thing was breathing so much oil, what I'm probably going to do is, um, is not hook this up for a minute, because I bet there'll be some oil in the intercooler. And um, I'm just going to put the, one of the old turbo pipes on facing out, out forwards here. So it blows anything out, it can blow it out on the on the deck out there and we can clear it up rather than, um, than blow it straight into my nice new shiny clean engine. swearing and trying to juggle a jack a piece of wood a sump and a sump gasket sumps refitted so all i've got to do now is we'll chuck serpentine valves on oiler up fit the turbo breather pipe because we're here and um i've got three bellows in bolts to quickly chuck in and a couple of um, anti-roll bar mounts and then we are on to hopefully it should start i'm not going to coolant it out for a minute because um, it'd be a bit pointless just in case we've got any leaks or problems to throw a load of antifreeze in it and I'm going to have to lock my way. So, um, belt on. 
belt on, oil in, filter. Might run it for a little bit and then change the filter, to be honest. The engine's as clean as clean, but if there's anything floating around in there, it might as well go in the um, in the old filter before it comes out, rather than in a nice new one. And possibly then we're about ready for whopping the manifold back on, or putting the engine cover back on, whopping the manifold back on, and then some test driving. Right, well, the light's failing. I am absolutely covered in snot. But... Prime the fuel system up. I've wang it over till it's got some compression. Um, uh, anyway, prime the fuel system is to undo the injector pipes. We've some diesel all over the place. Um, which is cranking up the injectors. It, um, the oil light is out. So I reckon there's a fair chance it'll work. Um, I've even that confident I've put antifreeze in it. So um, what I will do is toddle around the front in a minute, turn this round, and then we'll see if the... Well, it's not a miserable thing, it's quite a nice thing. Um, because if the nice thing actually starts, the only reason it's miserable is I've been lying underneath it for the last 10 hours and I'm absolutely, as you can see, covered in gag. Failing light, as you can see, everything is bolted back on via the manifold. We've got fuel, um, we've got antifreeze. I reckon. It's going to crack off, whether it sounds like a rattly bucket of poop or not, I don't know. So here goes. Oh, that's four cylinders. Sound rubbish, obviously, because the, uh, because the exhaust manifold, the manifold is off. But the oil light is out. Good morning, lights not on. Says it wants a service, we'll just have one of those. Yeah. Yeah, massive clouds of smoke. Yeah, massive puddles of snot pouring on the floor. Sneaky promising, people. Thank you. 
bit of body work. Paint front wings, paint on it. Sort the roof out, which has been prepared by a retard at the top on the front. And I think we'll have a top quality sales vehicle. So one cracked piston, replaced, um, new head gasket, full service. The oil is like brand new. Um, I reckon that'll be a nice truck for someone. Keep an eye because it will soon, um, I think she'll be an eBay. Once we've got rid of the rubbish on the sides as well, that'll have to go. We'll call that an end to that one. So uh, sprinter fixed. Um, I suppose we might as well have a quick wind around in here as it is 11 o'clock at night and I'm here on my Jones. So um, we sold the big tabot, some nice man on eBay. Um, six and a half thousand quid, ideal. It's a bit of a project, he's got to redo the inside. Um, I have just done a little video on fitting a screen panel on one of these 905s. Um, it's mainly Dom, so uh, Dom's not the most photogenic of people, not in a bad way, but he doesn't really understand cameras. Um, and we're on to painting this and finally painting that next week. And then we've just got to get around to finishing that the week afterwards. But life's all good. And then once we've done that, well, I've got Project Iveco to start. Um, along with doing some work and earning some money. Anyway, people, that is the end of this one. Um, 
like, tag, share, subscribe, follow. If I get another, I think I need about another 150 subscribers before they may possibly actually pay me some money. Right. It'll probably only be about five quid. Um, other things I've got to do. Um, of the twin cab I've had for about five years and still not got around to finishing, so that's on the list. Um, you might start on the Audi, because summer's here. And I've bought some seats for it, and I could kick that back into life. I've even got me Mark Free Golf GTI out of the hedge and got it running. Um, so that might be another one, because that's desperately going to need a coat of paint and a bit of dust. Right, a couple of days later, um, we've driven around for two days. Pucker. So um, I'm just whipping the uh, the wings and the bonnet off, and I'll um, always then get them painted. Um, I finally found the broken light wire after five hours of swearing yesterday. Um, all is good. So uh, like, tag, subscribe, share, follow, do all that, please, if you could, guys. We're getting pretty close to sort of getting somewhere with this. Um, we've got some more stuff coming up, as I said a minute ago. Um, there's a sprinter uh, screen panel, sprinter LT screen panel change. Um, basically the same. That might be a bit helpful to some of you guys. And then uh, next week, I've obviously got this tablet to finish, um, ready to go out, cut the camper van bits to do. And then we're going to just park just over there. We'll get back on this 906, pull this old 651 down and see if we can get it rebuilt, repaired, ready to get that out. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and um, we will see you next time.